In beginner photography, there is a maxim that you'll hear quite a lot, and it's this, get closer. Getting close to your subject can often be the best way to show it off in its best light, and also just to remove those distracting details that get caught up in the background. Taking this idea of getting closer to the extreme is called filling the frame. And it means that you take the edges of your subject right to the edges of your canvas and beyond. Here's an example. This is a colored pencil piece by artist Jonathan Newey. And here's another one. And you can see that the edges of the cat's face go beyond the edges of the paper and Jonathan has completely filled the frame with his subject. Here's an example of a portrait that uses the same principle. And this image by Jane Lazenby uses a combination of both fill in the frame and cropping to create quite a unique composition. Now fill in the frame does several things. Firstly, it leaves your viewer in no doubt what your central subject is. It stops you from adding unnecessary stuff in the background that's gonna detract from your main subject. It allows you to show detail and texture that your viewer wouldn't otherwise see. And you know there's a lot of interest in detail and texture. And it also creates drama and intensity. Things closer to us tend to have greater emotional impact. Now, I know what you're thinking. This is in direct contradiction to breathing space. Well, not really. Because the view is so obviously zoomed in, the viewer doesn't expect there to be empty space around the subject. So this image of the cat, it doesn't feel cramped and awkward in the same way that this landscape from earlier does. This is neither one thing or the other, it's neither breathe in space or fill in the frame. Here's a portrait with a fairly standard composition. It's not bad, but there are some distracting features in the background. So if we crop this quite closely to fill the frame, I think this would make a much more captivating drawing or painting. And it's not just animal or human portraits that can benefit from filling the frame. This floral was created by artist Joanne Thomas uh, with Brusho. And there's something just a bit more imaginative than simply showing the entire flower. Nicely centered, equal space all around. So let's take um, a fairly uninteresting composition of daisies and let's get closer to create a focal point and add a little bit more interest. And then from here, let's get closer again and really fill the frame to see if that creates even more interest and impact. Now these aren't necessarily better than the previous example, um, they're just different. It's another option for you to explore and to add some variety to your portfolio. What I really like about filling the frame and getting really close up is that you start to notice interest in subjects that otherwise you might find unappealing. So this particular image of an old car doesn't really inspire me to be honest. It's not a subject that's close to my heart, but a close crop and filling the frame, this really does inspire me. I think that would be a very exciting image to paint. So how do you decide whether to fill the frame or take a step back and include more of the scene? Well, it all comes back to the story that you want to tell. So if you need to capture more of the scene to tell your story, then that's what you do. If the story and the beauty is in the detail, then consider filling the frame. Here's an example I think will make it a bit clearer. So what story is this image trying to tell? It doesn't have to be profound or complicated, um, and there's more than one right answer. Well, we can't see anything of the craftsman, so it's not about him as an individual. I would say it's more about the interaction between the mallet and the chisel and the effect that it has on the wood. So because this photo isn't about the individual, I think it would be better served by filling the frame or at least moving in quite a bit closer. Something like this tells me more about that interaction between the mallet, the chisel and the wood. And I could even go all Michelangelo and leave the slightest of gaps between the mallet head and the chisel in anticipation of them connecting. If my story is about the hammer and the chisel, this composition is much clearer than this one. This one's a little bit nondescript. It's neither about the tools or the man. Now, what if the story you want to tell is more about the individual craftsman? Well, now I have to take a step back. This tells me more of a story about the person, doesn't it? So this is looking more like the kind of drawing or painting that you'd give to the person that features in it. The composition ticks the principle of thirds box. Um, there's plenty of breathing space on the right. If you're being pedantic, you know, you might say he's carving out of the scene, out of the picture, so he'd be better on the right hand side. But there's definitely not enough contrast on the focal point. You know, this light area over on the right hand side is too dominant and I think is detracting too much from him. But my main issue with this composition, being about the craftsman, 
is that he isn't big enough. So this is starting to become more about the workshop and someone, anyone, working within it. I think you just about get away with it here, but I just want you to imagine if the photographer was a little bit further out so she gets more of the workshop, can you visualize how that balance between workshop and individual makes it more craftsman generic? Less about a specific individual and more about a craftsman, any craftsman working in a workshop. That's not a bad thing, but it doesn't match the story that we want to tell. Here's a composition that does capture the individual and the concentration on his craft. And my favorite for this story is this composition. If this gentleman was a relative of mine and I was drawing a picture, painting a picture to capture him, this is the kind of composition that I would choose. And I'll leave you with this uh, very obvious example. Here's a portrait that, well, it fills a lot of the frame and it's a nice pleasing composition, but you'd never choose it for this particular lady because it misses the whole point. Okay, so let's move on to the next lesson now and that's Vantage Point.